In the previous session, we discussed about the basics of transaction processing. We discussed about interleaving and parallel processing. We also saw the basics of the lost update, dirty read, incorrect summary problem, different types of failures, and we also discussed about the acid properties of a database. Now, in this session, we will discuss about serial, non serial, and conflict serializable schedules. Now here I am having two transactions, transaction T1 and transaction T2. Now the instructions in transaction T1 are, it reads a database item A, then writes to database item A, reads database item B and then writes to database item B. Similarly with respect to transaction T2, we have the same instruction but in a reverse order. I have just taken them randomly. So here in transaction T2, it reads the database item B first, then writes to it. After that, it reads a database item A and then writes to database item A. So there is no connection between transaction T1 and T2. This is a separate transaction T1 and this is a separate transaction T2. Now to make the best use of the system resources, what I have to do is I have to execute these transactions concurrently so that all the resources are effectively utilized. Now transaction T1 and transaction T2 are combined together. Now when I am having more than one transaction executing simultaneously then those transactions are called as a schedule. Now this transaction is called as a schedule. Now this transaction I have named it as schedule S1. Now in the schedule S1 transaction T2 is executing first. It is executing all the four instructions of T2 first followed by all the uh, instruction of transaction T1. But is the transaction, is the schedule making best use of the resources of the system? No. because all the instructions of transaction T2 are executing first followed by transaction followed by instructions of transaction T1. I could have also reversed it. I could have made that all the instructions of transaction T1 are executing first followed by all the instructions of transaction T2. So there is no context switching because the transaction T2 executes first followed by transaction T1. Now this types of schedules are called as serial schedule wherein all the instructions of a transactions are executing first followed by the next transaction. So this schedule becomes a serial schedule. If I want to make this particular schedule a best schedule such that the resource utilization is the max then what I have to do is I have to do context switching. Now what I do is I change the sequence of how the transaction executes. Now there is context switching in the schedule to the same schedule I have kept the same instruction in schedule S2 also two instructions from T1 followed by two instructions from T2 one instruction from T1 one instruction from T2 one instruction from T1 followed by the last instruction from T2. Now in this case in the schedule S2, transaction T1 and T2, there is context switching between both the transactions. So now in this case, I can say that there is a good resource utilization in schedule S2 as compared to S1. Now here S1 is called as a serial schedule, whereas S2 is called as a non-serial schedule because of context switching which is occurring between both the transactions. Now, this instructions can be placed in any order but you cannot change the sequence. If it is read first followed by write then it should be the same order. You cannot, you cannot change the order. You have to keep the same sequence of the instructions. So this is about a serial schedule and a non-serial schedule. Now coming to the main concept. 
conflict serializability. Here I have taken some different example S1 and S2. Here it is a serial schedule and here it is a non-serial schedule. Now the question to be asked over here is, are serial schedule consistent? Are non-serial schedule consistent? What does it mean? That means after the transaction is over, will it take your database from one consistent state to another consistent state or will your database be in an inconsistent state? Now looking at this particular schedule S1, which is a serial schedule, this schedule can be a consistent state because all the instructions in transaction T1 are executing first followed by the instructions in T2. Now since there is no context switching, I can say that the serial schedule is a consistent state. It will, after the execution of both the transactions, the database will move to the next consistent state. Whereas in the non-serial schedule, I am not sure, I cannot say whether the database will be in a consistent state or non-consistent state because there is context switching in both the transactions. Now how do I identify that this non-serial schedule will be still consistent? Whether the sequence, whichever sequence is con uh, instructions are placed will be the same as that of your serial schedule. So basically our job is to find out whether this non-serial schedule will take our database to a consistent state. So we discuss a concept called as conflict serializability. Now to find whether there is a conflict in this non-serial schedule, we have to follow certain instructions. Now what are those instructions? Now two operations in a schedule are set to conflict. Now when I say two operations, this operation refers to two different transactions okay, and not operations from a same transaction. So two operations in a schedule are set to be conflict if they satisfy all the three conditions. Now which are these three conditions? The first condition is that the operation must belong to two different transactions. Second condition is they access the same data item X and the third operation is at least one of the operation among these two operations should be a right operation. So if these three conditions are satisfied then you can say that the two operations are conflict. We will see examples of this. Now considering schedule 1. I am having two transactions over here, transaction T1 and transaction T2. Now transaction T1, the first operation in T1 is it reads a database item A and there is another instruction in T2 which also reads a database item A. Now we have to check whether there is a conflict between these two instructions. Now what does the first condition say is that they should be from two different transaction. So first condition is satisfied. They are from two different transactions. The second and the third condition. The second condition is whether they are accessing the same data item. Yes, transaction T1 is accessing data item A and transaction T2 is accessing data item A. So the second condition is also satisfied in this case. The third case is whether one of the operation is a read operation. One of the operation is a write operation. Now, but in this case, both the operations are read operation. So in this case, the third condition is not satisfied. So now I can say that the operation from T1 and operation from T2 are not conflicting. In the second case, I have changed the sequence. I am executing the read operation from T2 first followed by the read operation from T1. So in this case also both the operations are from two different transactions. They access the same database item A but neither of the operation is a write operation. So there is no conflict 
in schedule 1 either this this way or this way there is no conflict coming to schedule 2 now in the schedule again i am having the instruction placed in two different sequences now first condition t1 there is a read operation on database item a and in t2 there is a write operation in database item b so the first condition is whether they belong to two different transactions yes second whether they access the same database item yes whether one of the operation is a write operation yes now in this case i can say that there is a conflict between this two operation in the same schedule i have just reversed the sequence of instructions again we'll check the condition over here whether there is a conflict or not both belong to two different transactions yes they access the same database item second condition is also satisfied the third condition one of the operation is write operation over here so there is a conflict between this two operation let's have a look at the third schedule now in this case in the third schedule i have two operations which are both write operations so we'll check over here 1 2 3 1 2 this two instructions belong to two different transactions yes they work on the same database item yes this uh, performs a write operation on a this also performs a write operation on a so the second condition is also satisfied the third condition says that one of the operation must be the write operation but in this case both operations are write so there is a conflict between these two operations so reversing the sequence of this operation both the instructions belong to two different transactions yes they were execute they were operate on the same database item yes they are ex, they are performing a write operation on data item a and one of the operation is a write operation so in this case also there is a conflict between both the instructions so i can come to a conclusion that the first schedule there are no conflicts in the second schedule either the first first case or the second case there is a conflict where with respect to schedule 3 also either this case or this case there is a conflict so basically to check whether there is a conflict between two instructions we make use of this three conditions to find out whether whether there is a conflict or no conflict between two instructions of two different transactions in a schedule so coming to our previous example we can clearly see that there is a conflict between these two instruction right there is a conflict between these two instructions and there is a conflict between these two instructions so what we can do is how we can have a conflict serializable schedule what we can do is if we interchange this and this this instruction and this instruction we move it up and down then we can have a non conflicting serializable so we can reduce the conflicting phase which is there between this schedule okay actually the conflict is between this and this and the conflict is between this and this so what we do is we swap the non conflicting instructions so now our definition of conflict serializability is when a non serial schedule can be converted into a serial schedule by swapping non conflicting instructions so in this case we are swapping this non conflicting there's no conflict between this set of instruction then the schedule is called as conflict serializable keep one thing in mind we are not swapping those instructions where there is a conflict we are swapping those instruction where there is no conflict and converting it into a conflict serializable schedule 